everyone, I'm Paige Abbott and this is your weekly recovery message. This week I thought I would talk about the many faces of shame. Brené Brown talks about the different facets of shame that we can have. Financial shame, not feeling good enough there, relationships, parenting, um, success-wise, professionally. There's so many different pockets that shame may lie in and each person is ultimately responsible for exploring and learning more about where there's that disconnect from self. So what parts of yourself do you not value and respect? Sometimes shame can be a more general and overarching feeling as well and then it starts to have roots and feed into many different areas. And that's what really struck me about some conversations I was having this week with folks is just hearing that this one emotion and experience of shame can take on so many different outlets. So I was hearing that for some, when their shame was really high, they would isolate and hide and avoid and feel less than and essentially just want to crawl into a hole um, and just disconnect from the world and from themselves. Other people were saying they found it difficult to eat, to nourish themselves, to rest, to take care of themselves. Others found that shame took them in the direction of ego, pride, or arrogance, and they found themselves judging other people, comparing, um, feeling sort of on the surface better than, but inside feeling very insecure um, and really not liking themselves. So there's so many different ways that shame can manifest in our lives. And the reason that shame is so important is it really does have a strong impact on mental health. And for those of you who recognize having addiction, it has a profound impact on the disease. When shame is high, relationship with self is low, and to find some relief or escape from that pain, then the brain will start to look for solutions that also feed into that shame cycle, meaning there's substances or behaviors that feed that cycle by seeming to perpetuate that idea of being less than or being not worthy. So I really hope that all of you will take time regularly to explore your relationship with yourself. If you don't feel that you have any shame, then I would encourage you each day to take time and ask yourself, where was shame present in my life today? Get to know that emotion, get to know what it sounds like, what it looks like, and where it takes you. Because as I was sharing about some of those conversations I had this week, the hopeful side of that is that as people start to see where shame takes them, then there's the opportunity to take different action. You can look after yourself differently, you can talk to yourself differently, you can behave differently with other people, and you can start to recognize how other mental health or addiction issues you may have try to use the shame to pull you back into that despairing, self-pitying, uncomfortable place. So I really hope that you'll continue to get to know shame and continue to work on that relationship with self. There's no greater relationship worth exploring and worth nurturing. I wish you all the best in your ongoing journey of health, recovery, and self-love. Bye for now.